runaway success of the HBO series based on the A Song of Ice and Fire novels by George R. R. Martin, the release of a Game of Thrones RPG was practically inevitable. Cyanide Studios' take on the franchise aims to recreate Westeros and the harsh principles that govern it. But is it worthy of the Iron Throne? With all due respect, I cannot answer that. <laughs> Listen to me! Rather than regurgitating the books or show, the game begins several months earlier, progressing alongside the series' opening events. The tale alternates between two drastically different men, Moore's Westford, a veteran of the Night's Watch, and Alistair Sarwick, an estranged heir of a noble house, seeking to claim his place as lord. After rubbing elbows with the likes of Queen Cersei and Lord Commander Mormont, their paths eventually converge as both are tasked with locating the same mysterious girl. She probably hates me as much as she does her imp of a brother. As is characteristic for the series, much of the plot involves the conflicts of living a life of honor amidst a web of political intrigue caught between the motivations of numerous manipulative players. The interactive dialogue doesn't make for huge differences along the way, but these moments really put you in the role as you decide how to respond to the queen or give someone bad news. Plus, if you've only seen the show, short codex entries collected throughout the game do a great job of deepening your understanding of the series without being overwhelming. How might I please you? The story lacks much of the wit and personality that fans are accustomed to, and it can be rather long-winded at times. However, there are enough juicy threads and shocking revelations to carry you through to one of four different endings. And once you're dead, your leader will be next. When I see a chance to earn a little coin, how can I pass it up? The chapter-based design of Game of Thrones has you changing scenery as the story dictates. One minute you'll be defending the wall from wildlings as moors, the next you'll join Alistair to quell riots in Riverspring. The alternating pattern keeps you with each character for a few hours at a time until the two join forces in the latter half of the game, and completing all 16 chapters takes about 30 hours in all. Now here's a visitor who brings back pleasant memories. Since your progress is restricted to this chapter structure, side quests are a grab-it-while-you-can affair. There are a few tasks like recruiting men for the Night's Watch that take place over multiple chapters, but for the most part, you have to find and complete side quests before you move on. There's only about one extra mission per chapter, but most are interesting and significant. One has more sniffing out traitors among the ranks, while another quest has Alistair infiltrating a mansion to get revenge. Are you resisting arrest? I bloody well am! There's no overworld to traverse, so traveling from the north to King's Landing is just a matter of choosing a point on the world map. While there are castles, dungeons, and houses of ill repute, there's really no payoff to exploration, and without a proper mini-map, it can be a bit of a pain to navigate new areas. Since quests have you retreading a lot of ground, you can find all the loot you need along the way. You are quite the optimist. As far as loot's concerned, the practice of grabbing gear from fallen foes doesn't mesh well with the fiction of Game of Thrones. Donning the armor with the best stats can result in you displaying the crests of two or three different houses, or you might have a man of the Night's Watch wearing garb from his wildling enemies. It's just completely out of character. What could you possibly gain from that? <laughs> combat in Game of Thrones is clumsy and unsatisfying. Using an active turn-based system, you select targets semi-automatically or with the cross pad and place up to three actions in queue. Hitting a shoulder button brings up a skill wheel to select moves, putting the fight into slow-mo to give you extra time, which results in much of the combat happening at this speed. Trying to move while attacks are in queue often creates confusion, and it can be difficult to read a situation when fighting large groups. Attempting to run out of range shows just how disconnected all of this is, as you can be killed by a sword swing from several feet away. Most skirmishes are essentially the same as you fight waves of nondescript soldiers. Strategy essentially boils down to choosing weapons effective against your opponent's armor and preventing the other guy from attacking by using skills to stun him or knock him down. Most of the variety comes from simply leveling up and acquiring more skills, and each character has a unique set of abilities. Morris can command his dog to attack, for instance, while Alistair can light enemies on fire. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. Outside of combat, Moore's talent as a skin changer allows you to go into first-person dog mode to follow scent trails and track individuals or find hidden items. There's also some bare-bones stealth gameplay as the dog can pounce on soldiers to rip out their throats, but the button mashing involved quickly grows tiresome. Meanwhile, Alistair can discover secret passages and solve some light puzzles, but neither of these elements are particularly stimulating. Inevitably, the game is at its best during character interactions as you seek evidence, listen to testimony, and make decisions, often determining whether someone 
should live or die. Let him go. Very well. Come! Come closer so that I may see your faces more clearly. If you had your heart set on taking in the sights of Westeros, the look of the game will be your biggest letdown. King's Landing seems like more of a sleepy village than a bustling city. Clothing textures are just a mess of pixels during conversations, stiff animation makes for comically bad street fights, and the crude lighting can make you do a double take at a blue dog or purple prostitute. There are some decent character designs, but on a technical level, the game is woefully outdated. On the audio front, the voice acting is rigid, but mostly bearable. The score borrows a few tracks from the show, including the excellent title theme, but otherwise, the music is composed of short, lethargic loops that only serve to dull the experience. No! For those wanting to explore the wilds of Westeros, climb to the top of the wall, or engage in a thrilling battle with the direwolf, this Game of Thrones falls completely flat. However, if you don't mind suffering through the combat, the visuals, and the lackluster environments, there's actually a decent interactive story to experience. Of course, that's a very big if. So when can we hope to see your completed masterpiece? I already told you, next year. <laughs> he says that every year.